Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. First of all, a big, big, big thanks to everyone who has liked my previous videos and subscribed to the channel. Uh, I've been uploading a lot of videos in this in this past month, and I genuinely, genuinely thank everyone who has been on my videos, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Now this video is going to be all about my MSFS and uh, NVIDIA control panel settings. Uh, basically, how I make my sim look as good as it does on the videos and also how i make my sim perform as good as it does on the videos that you have been watching so first things first we will look at the msfs in-game settings and then we will jump on to the nvidia inspector settings make sure you stick around for the nvidia inspector settings because there are a few things that i'll go over in in that part of the video which will i feel like it will drastically help your sim look good and also feel smooth so without any further ado, let's cut directly to the content. We are spawned in here at Sydney, which of course after the World Update 7 is extremely detailed now. But you'll still see that in the cockpit we are doing about 45 to 50 FPS without any FPS drops going on. Now let's get right into the MSFS settings and I'll show you how we can make this sim look good and also perform well on a medium end system now first things first we will go to the graphics tab i am running full screen on the display mode full screen resolution is 25601440 which is 2k and that's what i also upload my videos in so if you see that the videos are looking extremely crisp on your end or maybe sharper than other videos that you're seeing on youtube that's probably why Render scaling is 100. I am not scaling it up or down from 2K. VSync is off, but I'll go over how I have enabled VSync through um, an external software. So stick around for that. DX uh, DirectX version is set to DX11. Whenever I switch to DX12, I see that I have a lot of stuttering going on. So for now, I'm sticking to DX11, but I'm sure they're optimizing DX12 right now. And that is why it has issues. But yeah, for now, DX11 it is. Now coming to the advanced settings, anti-aliasing is set to full, which is TAA, that's the maximum available. Terrain level of detail is set to 100. I've seen that anything above 100 really hammers my FPS a lot, but doesn't provide that much of a visual benefit. But when I'm at 100, it's a nice sweet spot of performance versus visuals. Off-screen terrain pre-caching is set to ultra because again I see that when I'm on low or medium it gives me a lot of stuttering when I'm trying to pan around and whenever I'm on ultra like you saw I never see any stuttering or any FPS drops it stays constantly in the range that I'm working with and that's guys that's the most important thing even if you're getting 35 FPS if you're getting 35 without any stuttering it will seem extremely smooth on flight simulators because flight simulators are not the kind of quote-unquote games that you would need like maybe 100 fps or 144 fps like you do in apex or warzone right this is not a competitive game so 35 40 50 fps is just fine terrain vector data is set to medium i've seen that whenever i go to higher ultra it doesn't provide that much visual benefit, but I do get a ding on my FPS. So that's set to medium. I have the building set to medium. If you go to high and ultra, it will basically improve the shading on your buildings and also it will add some objects like AC units and stuff on the buildings. Now, obviously that takes up a lot of performance as you'll see about seven or eight FPS. So I prefer having this at medium. It gives me good amount of detail on the buildings and I am not really keen about having AC units on a, f on a building in a flight simulator. So yeah, that's that. Trees is also set to medium. If you set it to high or ultra, it'll improve. I don't know if it improves the way the trees look, the trees still look the same, but you will see that the draw distance has improved uh, when, you, when you set this to higher ultra. I think medium is a good uh, sweet spot, but if you think you need higher LOD on the trees, you can set it to high or uh, even ultra if you're flying maybe general aviation aircraft where you need higher detail on the on the ground grass and bushes again i'll leave a screenshot there's there is a difference in density of 
the grass and bushes that appear on the ground but I, I set it to medium because I think it looks just good on medium and doesn't affect my FPS as much. Most of these settings you know you can like try setting them to high in different conditions but that's what these things do like as you start pushing them higher maybe it doesn't affect your overall average fps but it does kill the lows now object level of detail is set to 70 think i can actually turn this all the way down to 0 or 10 and it won't affect anything in my sim because this is the setting that affects how far how far the traffic um, is rendered how far things like aircraft is, are, are rendered so i don't think this setting affects me at all because i disable all kinds of traffic whether it's sea traffic or land traffic or every I, I i don't care about that so i've disabled that so this setting is pretty much useless for me i i can leave it 10 70 100 doesn't matter uh, volumetric clouds i've set them to ultra this is the most immersion creating setting that we have in msfs now flying is pretty much all about the atmosphere around you if you don't have that set to ultra it doesn't really feel that immersive so i have this set to ultra and uh, anything below ultra honestly the clouds look like potatoes i recommend everyone even with the lowest spec system to at least have a volumetric cloud set to ultra it will make a huge huge difference in in the way your sim looks um, texture resolution is set to medium again since i'm on 2k resolution i don't see much difference going going to high and ultra honestly except that my fps gets a, a big penalty but yeah this is set to medium and isotropic filtering is set to off but i will show you again just like i said for vsync i'll show you how i set this externally because this is extremely important setting for your runway center lines taxi lines and all of that to show up crisp and clear texture super sampling is set to 4x4 texture synthesis is set to medium i've just set it to a point where it doesn't affect my fps by a whole lot water waves are set to medium honestly i feel like it looks just fine at medium or high shadow maps are set to 1024 again i feel like it's more than enough for the shadows terrain shadows 128 that's the lowest setting that i have before off just to make sure that you have some kind of terrain shadows make sure that you have this at 128 contact shadows are set to medium again not much visual difference if you set it to high or ultra windshield effects whenever i am in rain i increase this to like high and uh, ultra depending on my frames at that point but this shouldn't affect your uh, performance a whole lot you can set it to high or ultra always if you want ambient occlusion is set to medium no visual difference honestly uh, at least to my eyes going from medium to high or uh, ultra cube map reflections are set to 128 again just like i talked about shadow maps and terrain shadows just to make sure that you have some reflections uh, you can enable these but otherwise uh, I think it looks just good at 128. Ray matched reflections are set to medium, light shafts medium. Bloom is set to on because I feel like it just looks good. I can also set the lens correction and lens flare to on if you want those effects turned on. Depth of field, it depends. I keep it on or off. Basically, anything beyond um, ray matched reflections doesn't affect your frames per second. Except the last setting, which is uh, glass cockpit refresh rate, and that is set to low for me. I have not experienced any difference between medium and low and that's why i just set it to low so that i can get the maximum performance out of this so that's about the graphic settings now let's go to the data now an important information here i have my flight simulator installed on a separate 970 evo nvme ssd it's a 1 tb ssd and my flight sim takes like about 300 or 400 gb on it along with all the add-ons so yeah, that's another piece of advice. If you have some extra cash, please try to install your MSFS on a separate SSD, preferably a NVMe SSD. It really helps the loading times and I've seen that it somehow also helps the uh, FPS lows as well. I haven't seen as much of as much of FPS drops I was as I was seeing before after I've installed the flight sim on uh, on the nvme ssd before i had it installed on hard drive of course from dinosaur era but 
yeah i've seen a big difference in the consistency of fps i have disabled the aircraft traffic on the airport and also all the land and sea traffic because i honestly don't care you can keep this on i believe it does affect the frames a bit but if you want uh, some of it enabled you can probably keep it on i usually fly on vatsim so i don't need any aircraft traffic at least i've disabled that for sure all right so now coming to the main part which is the nvidia control panel setting and this honestly affects my smoothness of the sim a lot so make sure you you can pretty much copy these settings and it'll work for you i wouldn't say that for the msfs settings because your hardware would be different so you might have to you know uh, tweak and play around with that but a reference of my settings will still help you do that so that's what that was for but these these uh, nvcp settings you can pretty much just copy from here and I think they'll work great for you. Like I'd mentioned the first thing, anisotropic filtering. I've set that to 16x from here because usually your uh, global setting, your default setting would be off. I've changed that to 16x here and I've disabled it in sim. For some reason, it just looks um, more crisp if I set this anisotropic filtering from NVCP instead of setting it from the sim itself now everything else stays the same until you reach power management mode obviously you want to prefer maximum performance so you select that you have to select texture filtering and isotropic sampling optimization on since you have an isotropic filtering enabled negative load bias allow texture filtering quality you prefer highest performance possible there trilinear optimization on threaded optimization is set to auto as it is in the global setting and this is where you set the v-sync now i've set the v-sync too fast and for some reason it gives me extremely smooth experience when i have it set too fast don't ask me why because if i try to explain you the reason i would have no clue what i'm talking about but i do not have uh, i do not have g-sync or free sync enabled on my monitor right now and all I do is run my monitor at full 144 hertz and set this to fast. And for some reason, I have the smoothest experience possible on MSFS. So I don't promise anything with this, but you can try it out yourself and see what happens. Now, the next thing that you want to look at is the desktop color settings. For this one, I'm not going to tell you to copy my settings, but this part of the video is just to show you that there are settings in the nvidia control panel that you can use to edit the looks of your simulator so that it doesn't look all washed out and completely bland now i've seen people do it through the um through the geforce experience in game overlay but for me it does take away about five frames so i change the look of my sim just through these settings these are available for you to tweak there's not a lot of freedom here like you would have on the geforce experience but i think these will just do the job for you if you want to make your sim look good and also perform good all right so that is it for the settings video and uh, again i thank all of you who have already liked commented and subscribed Please, please, please make sure you keep doing the same. Please like the video, comment on the video, subscribe, share it on your groups and make sure you support the channel if you're liking the content. Thank you again for tuning in and watching the video and I will see you on the next one.